I'm sure a number of you saw this devastating story about a trucker in Colorado who's received 110 years in prison for an accident that was not his fault. Um, this is a thread from Eric, uh, uh, Eric, I've done that twice when I read this guy's threads, Alec Karakatsanis, who does fantastic work, um, on, on Twitter thread, a young trucker whose brakes failed before a crash that killed four people just got sentenced to 110 years in prison, mandatory death in prison for a crash. He didn't intend. There are several very important and hidden things going. First, a great irony of U.S. law is that it support is that it purports to set a high standard of evidence beyond a reasonable doubt to convict a person, but it allows human caging of millions without a shred of evidence that the sentence does any good. In fact, most sentencing in the U.S. is unconstitutional. Constitution requires judges to apply strict scrutiny when a fundamental right is taken away and bodily liberty is such a right. This means sentence must be as narrowly tailored as possible to serve a compelling interest. One of the great scandals of modern U.S. legal system is that no U.S. court opinion has ever meaningfully reconciled this basic tension between the Constitution and mass human caging. I wrote about it in my book, Usual Cruelty, here. Second, sentences like mandatory 110 years for this traffic crash reflect a deep pathology in U.S. system to try to blame bad people when harm happens. This is by design. It's profitable to people who control systems of harm to get us blaming individuals for mass social harm. You guys, this speaks to critical legal theory and critical race theory. We need to evaluate society on a macro level and evaluate the systemic oppression and, and not allow the hyper individualistic tendency to blame individuals and engage in character assassinations. It's That's not activism or, or politics of any sort. What it is is virtue signaling. Um, and that is how the powerful like it because that leaves them to maintain the systems uh, that oppress all of us to their benefit, right? Third, the prosecutor hit him with mandatory 110 years in prison, sent him to die in a cage as an old man because he didn't want to plead guilty. He exercised his right to a jury trial. The prosecutor hid the sentence from the jury. Where do you even start with that? Finally, left out of almost every article on these cases is what uh, going to prison means in our society rampant sexual assault, infectious disease, never hugging your family, scandalous lack of medical care, pervasive physical beatings, and torture of solitary confinement. We, our, our constitution disallows cruel and unusual punishment, and yet we engage on, a, in an, incredibly, on an incredibly regular basis. Um, we were speaking a bit about this as it pertained to Assange earlier. The U.S. prison system is barbaric. Um, and this individual, for those that like his brakes went out, his brakes went out. This could happen to any of us. You guys, your brakes could go out on the road and then people could die from a crash. You could be prosecuted 110 years in prison. Okay. Now I want to compare this to the case of Ethan couch. Um, this was tweeted by Mexican rug dealer. Ethan couch killed four people while driving drunk. His BAC was 0.2. Four guys, that is three times the legal limit. He fled the country. He was only given 10 years probation and then 720 days in jail for violating his probation. Rogel uh, Aguila, Aguilera Moderos, I apologize if I butchered that, was sentenced to 110 years for an accident killing four because his brakes failed. And that's the story we just covered. Um, and and I, I also wanted to note, you guys, part of Ethan Couch's defense here, the, the, his attorneys argued something called affluenza. Affluenza is basically saying that someone is so rich and out of touch that they don't understand the consequences of their actions. That's what got Ethan Couch off for driving drunk, killing people. Meanwhile, a guy whose brakes go out, a truck driver whose brakes go out, gets 110 years in prison. You know who should be held liable for those brakes going out? The company he works for. It's their job to maintenance the equipment. So. You know, this is just another example of how inhumane and unjust our so-called justice system actually is. And I also wanted to show you guys here, this is a little bit heartwarming as a result of this. Um, I don't have audio, but you guys can see here, trucks lined up, refusing to enter Colorado because of this verdict. 
So it's anecdotal. And, and the guy who posted it said it's anecdotal. He doesn't have statistics, but it looks like there are quite a few truckers who are going to take a stand here. I'll read uh, what he had to say. This is Joshua Potash or Potash, however you pronounce it. Truckers aren't entering Colorado in protest of uh, Rogel Lazaro Aguilera Maderos getting a 110 year sentence after his brakes failed and his truck killed four people. A tragedy the company should be liable for. I think we're about to see the power of truckers and obviously truckers have um an inordinate amount of power because they they so many industries rely upon shipments so truckers if, if truckers wanted to bring the economy to a halt they could in an instant like seriously in an instant um a, a, another such group is shipping right if 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 uh those who work the docks where um container ships and things come in if they wanted to just go on strike the whole economy would come to a halt right um, to some degree or another, same with with uh, shipments by flight. Um, there are certain industries that just have that chokehold. If they really want to make a difference, they can. And I hope that this comes to some sort of fruition. I hope that um, that there is some sort of action because of of this this wonderful um, attempt from these truck drivers to to make a difference here. Um, and I mean, imagine you guys, if, imagine if you were a truck driver and you watched this all happening and you're like, that could be me. That, that very easily could be me. Um, I mean, just, just, you know, heartbreaking stuff, but it is heartwarming to see the response from some of these truckers. And I hope that it comes to some sort of fruition. Um, so 